spray. I'm drinking a bubbly peach flavored. I am obsessed with these right now. Um, I read somewhere that carbonated water isn't great for your teeth because um, there's more carbon, therefore it's more acidic. I already knew this, but <laughs> I had to read it to remind myself. So I have to be careful about not drinking too many of these babies. But for now, I'm gonna drink one for this video. Seems strange to write a song about someone Looking in the rear view, dreaming about the lone sun I'm not really thinking about the waves, about the next one Not really about that, you did never like that You know what it feel Welcome to me back. My name is Mathilde, I'm 24 years old I'm in grad school and I study bioresource engineering And today I'm actually going to be talking about being in grad school and studying bioresource engineering I study bioresource engineering at McGill University. For context, McGill University is in Montreal, Canada, and actually McGill has two campuses, one in downtown of uh, Montreal, one in the suburbs in a more rural area, and that's where they have the Faculty of Environmental and Agricultural Sciences, which I belong to. And for more context, I studied environmental science as my bachelor's, also at McGill University, also at McDonald campus, and I really like the community at McDonald campus, and I had also moved a lot in my past, so I wanted to stay in the same place for a couple more years. This is the definition of a thesis. In short, a thesis is a long scholarly paper that is typically, that is typically used to sum up learned knowledge in a master's program. Graduate schools often require a thesis for students in research-oriented degrees to apply their practical skills before culmination. So a thesis master's is mainly research-based, although you do have courses, and I will touch upon that a bit later in the video. And you have to write, like the definition said, a long paper, a long scientific piece of work that summarizes your li literature search, your experimental methodology, if let's say you are doing an experiment, some research is more theoretical and more purely like analytical of like, you know, results and data. Some research is more field-based. So it really depends on the type of research. Then you have a section that explains, you know, the results themselves. What conclusions can you make from these results or what you need to further explore or other people need to further explore to come to a more robust conclusion because a lot of times in science you have to do many experiments before you can actually make a robust decision or conclusion I mean. This option for the MSc degree is oriented toward, towards individuals who intend to develop a career in bio resource engineering research. The research area include research areas include plant and animal environments, ecological engineering, in parentheses, ecosystem modeling, design management and remediation, then water resources management, so that includes hydrology, irrigation, drainage, drainage water quality, and then agricultural machinery, mechatronics and robotics, food engineering and bioprocessing, post-harvest technology, waste management and protection of the environment, bioenergy and artificial intelligence. So as you can see, bioresource engineering is a very wide field that it encompasses a lot of different sub-disciplines. I would summarize it as being environmental and agricultural engineering. And I'm, my research is in organic waste management and ecological engineering. When you do a master's in research, you have a PI, so principal investigator, also known as supervisor. And he or she or they guides you for your research, you join their lab group, usually you're working on similar projects to your lab mates, although sometimes it can vary a lot depending on if the lab takes on a lot of variety of projects. And you also have a supervisory committee that is usually composed of your PI and an other professor, sometimes a third professor, and you meet with them once a semester to kind of evaluate your progress and set goals for the next meeting and to get outside feedback from the professor, the other professor. So although you can get a professor from the same department, 
that isn't required. So for example, my committee professor, well, the one that's not my principal investigator, she is in another department, but her input is relevant to the kind of research that I'm doing. So now for the program requirements for the Master of Science in Bioresource Engineering, there are eight thesis courses, which are basically, you register for them, but it's not like a course where you have assigned things to do, it's just like a general structure. So for example, thesis one, if when you're taking that course, you're supposed to be looking at problem definition and literature review. And I'm then there's thesis two, which is you're doing written and oral presentation thesis proposal to the research supervisory committee, which I've mentioned. Then you have methodology development, experimentation one, experimentation two, data analysis, draft thesis preparation, and thesis completion and acceptance. But sometimes it's not as structured. Sometimes you have to backtrack depending on what kind of research you're doing. Maybe you have to rethink your research question or you have to redo an experiment. Then you have your you have required courses. You have your departmental seminars. You have to take two seminars. They're each one credit, and basically you present your research to your like your fellow classmates. Usually, the first seminar it's more about the general topic that you're going to be doing your research in, and the second seminar is a bit more in depth about what your research is going to be about. And then, scientific publication is usually you take towards the end of your degree. And that's usually when you're gonna submit a paper to a journal. And then you have to take complementary courses. You have to take nine credits. So that's three times three. That's three courses at least that have to be approved by your research director. You can take more than three. I took, what did I take my first semester? It feels like forever ago. So I took instrumentation and control, which was all about sensors. I took, Oh yeah, organic waste management. And then my second semester, I took a stats course, learning how to use R, which I <laughs> have to work on my R because when you don't use it for a while, you'll kind of forget. And a soil ecology course. And then I took all my seminars already. And now I have to just do more experimenting and methodology development. I'm actually a bit behind this program you're on average people take two to two and a half years but some people take three years depending on you know sometimes research takes longer or for example with covid a lot of people are having to take one or two extra semesters and that's just how things are because for example labs were closed from march to end of june last year and not everyone was able to go to the lab right in june actually like i only got to go to the lab in september while you do take some courses that are going to help you have the knowledge that you'll need to do your research a lot of a thesis masters is a lot of literature reading a lot a of formulating a research question that is supported by the literature like if you see a gap in the literature or you want to further explore something or you're personally curious about it and it seems to be something that makes sense to research and then it's methodology planning, so based on other protocols that already exist, writing up a methodology pr pr protocol that makes sense and that is testable. And then it's collecting the data and then it's analyzing that data to have results that are hopefully statistically significant. And as a lot of writing, learning how to write scientifically, a lot of scientists and engineers are not great writers, so that's a really good skill to develop. There actually are resources at McGill to help you become a better writer. There's one called the Writing Center, which is a, where a bunch of tutors that are specialized in writing help you write out your essays and your papers, which I did not know about in my undergrad, or I did know about it, but now everything is online, it's easier to do it, actually. And I would say one of the biggest challenges of your research masters is that once you're done with your core courses, it's a lot it's up to you to plan out your time so you know you have those big deadlines like for example you have to do when you're done writing your thesis you have to submit it once before a certain date 
and then it goes through corrections and then you get it back within like two to three weeks and then you have to address those corrections and then you have to send it back in for like the final copy but kind of in between that is kind of like nothingness where you have to be like okay by this date i will have done experiment one then by that date i'll have done experiment two and obviously you do have some of your guidance from your supervisor but some supervisor or more hands-on than others and it really is like learning how to manage your own project which is a great skill to have once you go out in the works workforce because you're basically able to be a project manager because you literally just manage your own research project you learn how to collaborate with other people because a lot of times while there's a lot of competition in certain certain departments i will say in my department there's a lot of collaboration and a lot of people who are willing to help others and like share you know literature or help people do some of the data collection using certain machinery and there's a lot of commodity commodity i don't know english is not my first language um, one thing that i will say though is when you're looking for a supervisor to do your research talk to current students past students if you can track them down usually if you go on your pis or future pi potential pis like research website you can see who they had in their lab previously or, and who they have currently so you can contact them via email or maybe you can stalk them on linkedin or facebook ask them like how hands-on or hands-off is the supervisor how much time do students take to graduate from their lab what are the supervisor's requirements for graduation because some supervisors require you to publish a paper to a journal and for it to actually be published whereas others they just want to see that you submitted an article for publication but it doesn't necessarily have to be accepted to the journal it just has to show that you tried so it's really important to inform yourself that's one thing i didn't know and it's important to kind of like figure out what is your kind of work ethic or work organization to try and match it to the pi that you eventually pick and to really try and start reaching out to them so whether you are currently in the university where your pi is to try and reach out to them through maybe if you have a class with them in your undergrad or you find their email and you try and set up a meeting in person well in non-covid times or in, on zoom also you can use the professors that you already have if you're looking for so if you're looking for a professor in another university, you can see if your current network at your current university can connect you to that professor because a lot of times research is done across different universities. There's a lot of cross university collaboration. So that's how you can get in touch with, let's say, maybe a professor in another university that's doing a discipline similar to what you're studying in your undergrad. You can ask your undergrad professor, hey, like, do you do work with a certain professor or is there professors that you know at any uni other universities that are looking for master's students? LinkedIn is a great source as well to get in touch with different people, definitely stalking professors, research pages and research. You can also, I would highly suggest reading their papers to make sure that's the kind of research you're interested in to at least have something to discuss and for masters, it's not necessarily a requirement to have a research project thought about before you apply to a master's. It's more so for a PhD. A lot of times professors are looking for students for certain research. They have the funding. Funding is something that's important. You have to figure out, are you gonna be internally funded by your professor? I.e., Are they gonna pay you from their lab money? Or do you have to apply to an external scholarship either like NSERC, which is a big science scholarship in Canada, but you have to have a certain GPA from your undergrad or sometimes some scholarships require you to be a Canadian student. Maybe your parents are paying for your master's. Maybe you're gonna be a TA, I'm a TA. That's how, one of the ways I pay for my education. So just a lot of things to take into consideration when you're looking for a master's thesis program so this was like a very quick overview if you want me to go more in depth into one of these things maybe what it's like to be a master's student at 
McGill University at McDonald's campus. I can do a more in-depth video about that. I just wanted to kind of do a brief overview of what a master's thesis is and kind of some of the things to expect. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.